Can you get your glass of water or anything? No, thank you. This will be brief. All right. Um, I think we're ready. So, what can you tell me about the stars? I can tell you that they have nothing to do with a the prize. They have nothing to do with candy. In fact, they have nothing to do with anything you might have already considered. What if I told you that every year there is a specific number of starred wrappers in every 13 ounce bag? Further, what if I told you that this annual number indicated the location, and code of course, of a meeting of the most powerful men in the world? What if I told you that those little stars on the wrappers of your Tootsie Pops were part of a worldwide Freemason conspiracy? A joke, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> okay, so in recap, <laughs> um, oh, so there is a uh, a Freemason conspiracy ring based on uh, the number of stars in each bag of Tootsie Roll. Am I hearing this correctly, <laughs> Matt? <laughs> you got all of this? Yeah. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. We all thought this was hilarious, and Jake discounted it, of course, but he decided to interview the professors about it. Great. More professors. What if I told you the... Indian child shooting the star was somehow tied to the Freemasons. Did you come here planning to waste my time? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was actually a real question. Yes. What if I told you <clears throat> there was a link between the Indian child with the star and the Freemasons? Yeah, that, that was my reaction, too. So, after that mess, I asked Jake what we were going to do, because clearly this Mason thing wasn't getting us anywhere. He said we were going to start over. My favorite footage the guys got was from after they initially gave up on the whole Mason thing. They were on the way to the store. This time, we should talk to the manager and see if he honors those Indian star things and gives free stuff. Okay. I guess that'd give us some place else to start. And some free candy. Free candy, definitely. Yeah. Hey, man. Let's go see if some Masons have some candy. You're an ass. Wait, wait. Hold on. He has some. Go! Sir, go! Sir, can you Jake! About the pops? Matt! Matt, you're getting hit! I got it! Go! Sir! Sir! Do you believe the son of a bitch got away? Seriously. Well, look at this. He's eating one as, as he walks out. Yeah, he fucking was. Let's just go home. At that moment, Jake Walden was convinced that Teddy Ruxpin had told him the truth. The Freemasons were communicating through a numerical code on the wrappers of children's candy. Now we begin the most important task of our lives. We're going to contact our elected officials in Washington, our congressmen, our senators, even the fucking president. Anyone. God damn it, Sam. This is not a toy. This is not our candy. This is not our sustenance. This is a symbol for us. We will rally around this as they have, but we won't use it like they have. We won't use it to pull the wool over anyone's collective eyes. We won't use it to obfuscate. We won't use it to enfangle. We will use it to uncover the conspiracy. Anyone, 
Anyone who might be a Freemason, we contact. We drag this story out of them. I want to hear it from their own fucking mouths. Yeah, but at this point, we all seem a little scared. I mean, with reason, right? Taking on the Masons? It all seemed like a little too much. I mean, exciting, sure, but just thinking about it, I nearly shat myself. I still do. Let's get one thing straight. The only people I hate more than professors are goddamned politicians. I was pumped to bring the fight to them. In the following days, calls were made, letters were sent, all garnered no response. After securing a small loan, Jake made arrangements for his crew to make their final stand in the home of American politics. Washington, D.C. On the evening of November 13th, he assembled his crew for one last production meeting before the trip. It is the last time any of them would see him alive. You get on that plane tomorrow morning. I want you to know that you're traveling as the best crew a director could ask for. Your hard work thus far has proved steel. These are the final days of darkness, of deceit, of manipulation. We're going to expose this Freemason conspiracy once and for all and make the world safer for us and for our children. Well, eventually, our children. It's going to be a long trip. So, go home. Get some rest. I love you. Jake was alone that night, finalizing the itinerary. He was not expecting any visitors. He wouldn't have arranged all this if he was just going to off himself. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, he wasn't depressed. I haven't seen him this alive since he made Dracula's nephew meets the space homos. I had all the footage with me that night. If I hadn't, I'm sure they would have taken it. When Matt arrived at Jake's apartment the next morning to take him to the airport, he found his friend dead. Fuck. When we arrived on the scene, we found a 22-year-old white male identified as Jake Walden, dead to a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. The handgun bearing his prints and the note add up. It was a suicide. Bullshit. Bullshit! He was killed by the goddamn Masons to keep their secrets safe. Fuck that who was a visionary who stumbled across the hugest conspiracy on the planet. And he was my friend. I miss him. <laughs> so much. What killed Jake Walden? What exactly was the nature of this conspiracy. Was he murdered by an ancient association trying to maintain their secrecy? Or was he simply a depressed young man who could not cope with the daunting experience of human hopelessness? The world may never know.